Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and we're back with some more Southeast Asian pack DLC animals with Planet Zoo. I am really excited for this one. Y'all were really doling out the requests in the comments of the previous episodes, and I am <laughs> I'm really excited for the animal we're adding today. Uh, I'm a big I'm a big dog person, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, with the addition of the dole today, uh, all my hopes and dreams and desires. Uh, get fulfilled. <laughs> they are exactly as adorable as I expected them to be. But of course, before we actually add the animal in, we are going to be building a space for it. One of the first things I actually uh, challenge myself to do over here is uh, try and build an actual ramp that goes like directly on the terrain. And I'm so pleased that I was able to pull it off here. You can see how much I like struggled with it, but I insisted. I was like, no, I'm going to do this today. Come hell or high water, we're going to accomplish this. And I actually managed to, to make a ramp uh, without needing to rely on, you know, elevated terrain or using rocks to hide the, the reality underneath the path or anything like that. So pretty pleased with that. Off to a good start already with this time lapse. Uh, just measuring out the space required. The dole actually requires a fair bit of space to run around and play. And again, the pack gets quite large. We actually, we kind of end up with enough space, but more on that later. But I'd just like to do a quick measurement before I... Uh, get to ahead of myself. But as I'm putting a couple of these uh, little pyramid looking things down, I just want to mention really quickly, folks, again, if you've been enjoying this little mini series, if you'd like to see more like it in the future with more DLC for Planet Zoo and whatnot, please don't hesitate to let me know. Leave a like down below. Uh, you know, if you've been really enjoying it, maybe consider sharing it with other people that might enjoy it as well. Bring more eyes to it and whatnot. Uh, it just helps me know what folks are interested in and uh, helps me kind of like make plans for the channel moving forward, not just with regards to, you know, what I do, but also how I go about doing it. Like I say always, I do read all of the comments. Uh, so keep them coming. Uh, you know, keep me informed as to your hopes and wishes and desires. And uh, uh, the, the best way to do that, of course, is to uh, leave a comment down below, write out your thoughts, and they will be read. And again, I do look at the number of likes and comments as well to get a quicker read on folks' interest levels on various things. And by the way, again, if you want to pick up the DLC yourself, if you use the link I have included uh, in the description down below, uh, you can support the channel as you buy at that link. With that said, what am I doing over here? So, in my sort of prior knowledge of the Dole, um, and it doesn't really get corroborated by, by Zoopedia as much as I would like it to, I guess it kind of does, but in my in my prior knowledge of the Dole, uh, they tend to live in well a variety of kinds of biomes and, and a variety of kinds of uh, geographies, and and one of those kinds is actually mountains. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be funny, uh, sort of on two fronts? One, in my head, and I talk about this after the time lapse as well. You don't, I feel like Southeast Asia and mountains and mountain ranges don't often go hand in hand. There are a couple of like stereotypical visuals that are associated with Southeast Asia. And I wanted to kind of break away from that a little bit and, and try and offer something a little different. Um, I, I feel like whenever you get like East Asian and Southeast Asian architecture and mountains, people's minds typically jump to uh, Japan as an example uh, right off the bat. Now, obviously I'm making a blanket statement here. That's not true for everybody, but I feel like there are some, uh, I guess, expectations, if you will. But, uh, but anyway, that's that's only one uh, factor. The other factor is that um, I thought it'd be funny because last session we dug down into the ground and this session we're pulling up out of the ground. And so as far as like elevation is concerned, you know, just going all out in both directions, down last time, up this time, you know, what are we gonna do next time? Stay flat, you know, go upside down, who knows? Who knows, we'll, we'll figure it out. But, uh, but no, th those were kind of the driving forces. Uh, plus it gives me an excuse to make another waterfall. I'm, 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 I don't know, I like waterfalls. Just in real life, in the game as well, I feel like they can look quite nice. I do like me some, uh, some waterfalls. Uh, but there are a couple of things I wanted to touch on, uh, of course, from the animal's perspective as well. And I talk about this stuff a little bit later as well. Thought I'd give them a nice little kind of cave to hide in if they so chose. Uh, nice big open spaces for them to run around in. I also wanted to kind of mimic their, uh, well, at the time, what I assumed to be their uh, close kind of uh, relations with humans. Um, initially, one of my first ideas for this enclosure, I'm just going to say it, it's a little silly, but I was going to make a little, little like backyard doghouse kind of a thing uh, as like their, uh, their hard shelter. Uh, I thought it'd be funny, it'd be kind of cheeky, but I was like, nah, you know what, let's... <laughs> Maybe save that for later or something, but uh, for now I want to do something a bit more natural. Uh, so yeah, we got the, the 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 cave and whatnot, but I built this little path uh, using soil um, to imply, you know, a, 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 an often trodden path, if you will. It's the uh, 
it's like it's like what you would see happen to grass where uh, people go back and forth between the same place often obviously it happens with animals as well but it's a very typical site in you know even modern day cities and stuff uh, if you ever see a large park you'll sometimes notice the park has a path uh, but it also has like a place where the grass just does not grow and that's because it's been stepped on so much uh, they're called uh, desire lines or desire paths I forget now uh, but they're a very interesting bit of study in uh, in like urban planning and urban design and, and stuff like that. And I, I quite find them interesting um, because they just like every time you see them, it's just like, hey, look, this is clearly not what people have considered to be the most uh, efficient um, path here. But some some uh, some urban planner or architect or what have you has decided that like, no, it's it's got to look good. And so I've laid out the path this way and then everybody ignores it because it's inconvenient. <laughs> I quite like the, uh, I like traffic flow and stuff like that. I know it makes me sound so interesting, but it's it's an interesting topic of conversation, how we uh, how we navigate through spaces and whatnot. Uh, I find that stuff very fascinating. But moving on from that, uh, adding some more vegetation here and there, really, you know, taking advantage of this very different biome that we have with the uh, the 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 dole because they are available across a multitude of biomes they're not just tropical or grassland they are uh you know seen in more kind of taiga type spaces and we are a north american zoo despite this being the southeast asia kind of dlc and whatnot uh i'm able to take advantage of the rock textures and stuff like that because we're in a taiga zone in north america uh, we're able to you know just take advantage of the rocks and how they blend in nicely and all that kind of stuff really quite pleased actually you saw me earlier as well place down some uh coolers on the peak uh, that really helps kind of just break up the uh, the sameness uh, the trees are helping do that as well but of course you can't just put trees everywhere there's no sense of scale it doesn't feel like a mountain obviously because it, it I mean like it isn't right it is just a little mound as far as a mountain is concerned um, but uh, as a result of that like you have to be very picky about which trees how many trees and, and which trees and where those trees go uh, so I try to use like snow uh, to to imply um, height as well and to also as I was saying earlier break up the texture the, the monotony of the, the rock texture as varied as it is it still repeats right uh, now down here again implementing a bit more of that human touch uh, initially I go with the uh, the brick um, texture I quite like how brick looks but it just doesn't work as well as uh, as I'd initially thought it would so instead I go with uh, with a concrete wall and uh, I actually implement the uh, it's like waviness to it I quite like how it looks I uh very different. Um, it feels like a uh, mountain range of sorts-ish. Like you have to really stretch your imagination, uh, and it kind of looks uh, mountain, mountain-esque, I suppose. Uh, getting a staff connection over here as well, not to do complicated with that. But otherwise, overall, pretty pleased with this space. I do a little bit of adjusting here and there, making the mountain feel a bit more like broken up and a bit more rugged. Uh, so that when the snow comes in, well, you'll you'll see what ends up happening. I'm actually quite pleased with how the mountain looks. Uh, and it's been funny, I, th I think back to our um, snow leopard uh, enclosure and, uh, oh man, that mountain range that we did at Elite Zoo North. Again, those of you that are familiar with the Let's Plays on the channel will kind of know what I'm talking about. And if you're not familiar, uh, you know, you might want to check it out. There, there are a lot of time lapses and, and fun builds that we've done uh, over the course of our franchise mode Let's Play. And um, while there is, yes, a continuity, sometimes it's fun to just kind of watch a build. And I am pretty happy with how our snow leopard area ended up but it's kind of funny coming back here now and building a mountain with the uh, learning that I've had between then and now but anyway that's it for this time lapse I hope you enjoyed it we're gonna dive in with the animals now uh, adjusting the terrain a little bit but uh, that's final touches uh, back to uh, regular speed in just a moment's time hope you enjoyed all right folks we are back from the time lapse and i gotta say i am quite pleased with how that one turned out actually discovered something a little new during the time lapse and hopefully i pointed that out you know again with the time lapse vo and hopefully we're able to dive right into bringing in some of these new animals uh i thought it'd be nice to experiment with a visual style i guess and uh, elements i guess that aren't uh maybe typically associated with this dlc i think when uh, folks think Southeast Asia. I might be wrong, and, and correct me if I am wrong, but I feel like the typical imagery that's associated with Southeast Asia is a lot of this kind of like forested, densely jungled area, thatch roofing, that kind of stuff kind of comes to mind. That's what gets evoked in my mind, at least. It's either that or kind of like what we did at uh, Bangkok uh, Night Market at Elitsu North, where it's more like the... Um, oh, I forget the material, <laughs> of course. The, the uh, corrugated steel and whatnot. Like, I feel like there's some 
typical imagery that comes with the uh, with the phrase Southeast Asia. And I saw this as an opportunity to break away from that. And uh, again, I'm, I'm sure I touched on it during the time lapse, so I apologize if I am repeating myself. But uh, I'm really pleased with uh, yeah how it's kind of come together. I think it looks uh, in, in motion. I'm quite pleased with how the waterfall looks as well. Again, those of you that have been following my channel uh, have seen my, my evolution of waterfalls, especially over the course of Elite Zoo South as I've been trying some uh, some new experimentation with waterfalls and gardening techniques and things like that. And it's all I'm pretty happy with how it's all coming together, which is maybe why I'm a little waterfall obsessed lately. Uh, and I just like waterfalls in just, you know, real life as well. So, you know, no harm, uh, no harm in sort of applying my, uh, my real life loves, I suppose. That's, uh, something I try to do as often as possible with, uh, with Planet Zoo. But, I digress, and I, uh, I delay what we're all very excited to see. Many of you actually were asking for the dole, uh, and it's actually, it's quite funny. Um, a couple of episodes ago now, I guess, there was a, there was a request for the dole, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. There was a request for the doll, and uh, and, and it was kind of like uh, it's. It, I forget the exact verbiage, but but I loved it because it was the the comment was along the lines of like you know it is it is just another like dog kind of a, a, an animal, so maybe it's not as interesting as some of the other animals. And I was like, oh, but 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 doggos this is like the way to my heart. So <laughs> no uh, no concerns there. I've actually been excited every time these last couple of sessions when I've said like. I have an animal in mind, but if you have one you'd like to, you know, see, let me know in the comments. Every time I've said I have an animal in mind, it was the doll. I've been very excited to see the doll in action. Yeah, I suppose arguably they're among the simpler or more, um, I guess, recognizable of animals from this DLC, but they look adorable. I want to see them in action. Uh, you'll never hear me complain about um, dog or dog variants or dog likes, let's call them, like dog adjacent animals as well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get, uh, you know, I, I know a Raghav in real life, so why don't we go ahead and get, uh, Raghav over here, uh, and we'll go ahead and get, um, you know, I know an Anya in real life as well, spelled differently, but I'll go with that, sure. Let's go ahead and get an Anya and a Raghav. Um, we should obviously take a look at their, uh, uh, Zoopedia entry and stuff like that, I'm getting a little carried away. You can see, you can tell how excited I am to just see the animals i'm like oh yeah let's uh, let's let's go ahead and pick some up and and, and put them in uh, i i should definitely let's go ahead and send them over to uh quarantine and then we'll take a look at their zoopedia entries i apologize for doing things a little out of order today uh i also apologize by the way for the slight delay in this session uh i believe we missed an episode as per my like regular scheduled programming i apologize for that uh it's been a pretty wild uh month yet again it's been a wild year I keep saying it's been a wild week, it's been a wild month, it's been a wild year uh, with all sorts of cool stuff happening on the channel and behind the scenes and some stuff I'm gearing up for as well. Uh, so I apologize for that, but we're back with the regular sort of timings and schedule. Uh, once we're done all the Southeast Asia DLC animals, we'll hop on back to uh, Elite Zoo South and continue our franchise mode Let's Play. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel that are just watching with this, please, if you're enjoying the Planet Zoo coverage, if you'd like to see more games like this uh, and you're looking for, you know, hopefully a, a fun place to see it happen, uh, don't hesitate to subscribe. Uh, it's 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 one of the sort of main focuses on the channel. I am eyeing some other games that are similar as well to cover on the channel too. And beyond that as well, of course, if you have any feedback, opinions, or anything like that, share it down below. Leave a like if you'd like to see more of this coverage continue. It does make a very, very big difference. Now, with all that said, over to the Zoopedia article. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a little out of order today, but uh, I hope y'all don't mind. <laughs> All right, the doll. Oh, look at that. How could I, how could you say no, right? It's a very interesting face shape, isn't it? It's like uh, it feels like the ears are like twice as large as the head, and the head is like half as big as it should be compared to the body. As the, the ratios just feel a little off. Maybe that's just me. I'm not saying that the artists have got it wrong. I'm sure the artists have got it right. I just want to be clear there. I'm sure the artists have got it right. I just think the animal, in some ways, looks, you know, uh, a little off. Maybe is the way to put it. But all right, the doll. Juan Alpinus Alpinus, or is it Alpinus Alpinus? I think Alpinus Alpinus sounds nicer. None of that, it's starting to sound weird now. Uh, the Dole, endangered with a population in wild of 2,500. So I know a little bit about the Dole already, uh, and I'm sure I touched on it, some of it at least, during the, uh, the time lapse. I know a little bit about the Dole, but their range has significantly reduced, and we'll touch on that in just a little bit. Uh, the Usuri Dhol lives in the forests, grasslands, and tundra of India, Nepal, China, Bangladesh, Myanmar, and Thailand, and is the largest of all subspecies of Dhol. The Usuri Dhol has a red coat, white underbelly, and narrow muzzle. They have summer and winter coats, with the winter coat being thicker and a brighter red. Huh. 
interesting. The I mean, I, the, the thicker part, okay, to be expected. Brighter red, that's a bit of a surprise. Uh, the doll has a head body. <laughs> it's just after having talked about the ratios, I, I going right into the, the measurements. Uh, the doll has a head body length of 35.2 inches to 45.2 inches, a tail length of 16.4 inches to 20 inches, and a shoulder height of 18 inches to 22 inches. Okay, yeah, so this is talking about ratios. So I'm not, I guess I'm not the only one who thought it was worth mentioning or worth thinking about. Both sexes are similar in size, but males are significantly heavier than females, with males weighing between 33 pounds and 44 pounds, and females weighing between 22 pounds and 28.6 pounds. The dole is an endangered species, and in recent years, its range has decreased. Hey, I was literally just saying that. They were hunted and had bounties put upon them in India until protective legislation was introduced in 1972. Interesting. The dole is often seen as a pest as it can as it can and does kill livestock. Sounds somewhat similar to like the uh, the dingo situation, I suppose, that we're reading about in um, uh, like with the Australia DLC, right? Uh, their population has also been introduced to novel diseases through domestic dogs. Additionally, deforestation has destroyed and fragmented their habitat and reduced prey availability. The dole is now a protected species in India, Russia, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Laos. So uh, a lot of what uh, I said, like I've already known about the whole whole is uh, is mentioned here, um, especially with regards to the, the reduction in their range. Now, I did not know actually about the bounties. That's pretty interesting to me. Now, the reason why I say that's interesting to me about these bounties in India is because it reminds me of. Uh, oh, I forget the name of the. Uh, the the. The eff I think it's called the Cobra Effect, actually. Um, and I, if you look up, I, I, again, I'm, I'm going off the top of my head a little bit, so excuse any errors here. But I think it is, uh, the, the greater like conversation is about perverse incentives. Uh, and a key example of it is the Cobra Effect. And that happened um, with the British, I think at the time it was the British Raj, but either way, it was it was when the British, in one way, shape, or form, uh, were um, sort of had had control over the Indian subcontinent, and they uh, offered a bounty uh, for every dead cobra that was uh, turned in. And the uh, what the cobra effect is is that well, initially this kind of worked out. It was like great, there were a lot of cobras. I believe it was like specifically in Delhi. There were a lot of cobras, they were like, let's let's get this legislation going, and people will start getting paid to bring in cobras. And in the interest of making said money, people started bringing in dead cobras, and they started making money. But, some of you will have already realized where this might be going, and it's quite clever. If all you need to make money is a dead cobra, what's the best way to get a dead cobra? Well, you need to have a live cobra. How do you have live cobras? Well, maybe you breed them. People started breeding more cobras in order to have dead cobras that they could then turn in for, like, as a bounty. Um, again, this is my, like, rough memory of it. I learned about this a long time ago. I thought it was fascinating. So if I have a couple of things a little wrong, uh, feel free to correct me. Uh, but I would highly recommend looking up. Yeah, I believe it is called the Cobra Effect uh, and Perverse Incentive. It's really, really interesting topics. But now that makes me think about the whole bounty. Uh, I wonder if, uh, like, I wonder when that bounty was kind of put in place. It was this... Uh, you know, was it the the Indian government, as it were, or was it the uh, the like the British um, government at the time? Like when when did that start? So in 1972, you have protective legislation. I don't know. I'm actually really curious. I'm actually really curious as to who offered. Oh man! Well, this is for me. This is when Planet Zoo is kind of at its like best. Is when it it, it gets me learning something and it gets me curious. Uh, about something, and then and now I want to go and, and look it up. I want to look it up right now. But uh, hey, you know, someone look up, I guess. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Cobra effect, yeah, uh, hopefully you hopefully you find it interesting. Uh, I thought it was fascinating, and I thought it was quite uh, quite cheeky and clever. And of course, it kind of like caused it it, it worsened the problem that uh, it was trying to solve. Uh, over here, unfortunately, looking at the population in the wild, that is not what happened, and it seems that they have been quite whittled down. If we look at the natural habitat, yes, this is their decreased range. Um, I believe at the uh, the height of their range, um, 
mountain on the side, uh, they went all the way up to, like, deep into Mongolia, which is roughly around here. I mean, I'm, like, roughly guessing at my geography. Uh, they went up to Mongolia. I, I believe they actually went even as far as... Um, I believe they went as far as Turkey. I, if I recall correctly, there was, like... Uh, there, there was a, a, a belief, or I guess there was... There's, there are some, um, what's the word I'm looking for, like assumptions or, or we, we assume, I guess, yeah, that, uh, that they had previously gone as far as Turkey, but then have had a lot of their, um, again, territory sort of pushed back, as it were. Uh, but that's, that's a little bit, that's a little bit farther out than, uh, than what we're relatively confident about, which is, yeah, they went, uh, they went pretty far out, like, uh, as far as, like, Afghanistan, I believe, up to Mongolia, um, and you know, obviously all the countries in between, it's not like, it's like, <laughs> it's not like those countries border each other, but please don't, uh, like <laughs> get what I'm going at there. Uh, and, and yeah, it's, it's been significantly reduced. Now, obviously I'm being inspired by some of the more mountainous regions that they do, uh, reside in. Uh, it seems as though they're focusing on the, uh, Usuri Dhol, which lives in forest grasslands and tundra. Uh, in my sort of knowledge, they live in mountainous, like mountain forests and stuff as well. Uh, but the, the Usuri hole specifically, I'm not sure if it's a little different, so I hope I haven't got that uh, too far off. But it does look like they have uh, some... Um, I mean, look, that, that's, that's got to be the, uh, the Himalayas, right? Like, it's such a clean line. It looks like they have some association with these mountain ranges. Uh, so it uh, looks like we're not too far off there. All right. Sorry, I, 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 I know I, I took a little bit of time talking about, about this, and I, I'd say I apologize, but I love this aspect of the game so much. Um, not just hanging out with the animals, but actually learning about them and, and, and these conversations that we have, I'm quite a fan of, so I hope you don't mind. Uh, group size is 2 to 25. I kind of wish I'd checked that before I dove in. Uh, I believe we have enough space for them. 1,100 uh, meters square. Uh, I think we're looking at like 2,000 or so. Uh, I believe I did a quick test before we dove in um, as to the, the size of it. I, thought, I, thought, uh, I vaguely remember 2,000. Um, is, is roughly what we're working with, but of course that's before we got the, the mountain and the, and the water in there and stuff. We might need to expand a little bit, but that's not going to be too much of a problem. Anyway, uh, <laughs> 2 to 25 uh, is the group size up to 25 males, up to 13 females. Oh, now that's interesting. The flip of what I would expect, fair enough. Male bachelor group size and female bachelor group sizes are 2 to 25, same. Uh, dominance is alpha male and alpha female, unsurprisingly, and I just love the consistency, I suppose, right? Uh, monogamous mating system. Confident relation with humans, but guests cannot enter the habitat. Fair enough. No surprise there. Uh, 20 inches tall at the shoulder for males. 19.2 for females. 13-year life expectancy across the board. And weight is where there's a large discrepancy. Uh, 38.5 pounds for males and 25.3 pounds for females. Again, pounds versus kilograms and the flipping back and forth is always funny age of sexual maturity is at two years sterility is at 10 years ah okay so they do have uh i mean again unsurprisingly i suppose they do have some time where they are sterile a uh, number of offspring per mating event is two to six wonderful two month gestation and incubation period 12 month interbirth period and easy reproduction in captivity wonderful hopefully we'll see some puppers today uh if not we'll catch them eventually in like the next video or what have you social needs dholes are very social animals that live in family packs in an average pack, there is an alpha male and alpha female, their young adult offspring, and a litter of pups less than a year old. I should, by the way, this reminds me, get two more dolls. Like, if I can get some more, then why not? We'll have a higher chance maybe of, well, it'll only be the alpha male and female that mate, so it doesn't make a difference there. But hey, we'll have more dogs running, out, running around, and I'm, I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, reproduction. In a doll pack, there is an alpha male and an alpha female, and their first and second generation offspring. Packs are familial. The alphas are monogamous and do not mate with any other individuals. Yep, as I figured. Uh, as the female is approaching estrus, the alpha male and female will bond. During estrus, they will mate several times. After a pregnancy of 60 to 63 days, the female will have a litter of 2 to 6 pups. For the first three weeks of the pup's life, the mother does not leave the den. She is provided food by the pack. Uh, it's just... Honestly, like the embodiment of it takes a village, you know, in... in, in in, in canines, it's or or Canada, I suppose. It's uh, I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Um, the word hole, we don't we don't know 100% where it's from. 
uh, we're like I, I don't think we're 100 percent certain exactly where the, the term comes from, but there is a I, I believe one believed root of it is uh, from from uh, Canada, which is uh, not Canada. It is uh, Canada is a, I believe it's in I believe it's a province or a region in South India, uh, but but Canada Can Canada Canada Canada. There's something there. There's something there. And I, I couldn't help myself. Anyway, um, but I do love this whole, yeah, like it takes a village to raise a child kind of an approach that canines and uh, Canada tend to tend to have. Anyway, she's provided food by the pack, as I was saying. Uh, at three to four weeks, the pups start to eat solid food regurgitated by their parents and other pack members. Again, just like this, the whole community aspect. At six to nine weeks old, the pups are fully weaned. And at three months old, pups are old enough to start accompanying pack members on hunts and learn how to hunt themselves. The pack will be fully mobile and go on longer hunts when the pups are eight months old. Young holes stay with their parental pack until they are between one to two years old. They, ooh, whoa, hey, hello, that should be a capital T. They leave their pack when they reach sexual maturity or when competition for food within the pack becomes too high. They may live alone or in sibling groups for a time. Loaned holes may partner up with another loaned hole f of the opposite sex and search for territory. Once located, these two holes will start their own pack and become the alpha male and alpha female. I just, I, man, probably some of my favorite social dynamics uh, among, among, uh, uh, among, <laughs> as I was saying earlier, dog and dog likes. Uh, but uh, it's just fascinating to me. Processed meat, whole carcass, and whole carcass and supplements. Fair enough. Uh, habitat enrichment. There is the tug rope, which I believe is new. Uh, I put the tug rope down. I'm excited to see that in action. The water pool we've seen at Elitsu South. I might put one down if I'm if we're not getting enough out of these guys. But uh, uh, well, we've got the bubble machine and the rubber duck in as well. I'd like to see them play with some bubbles and stuff. Uh, we'll see how that uh, plays out. Otherwise, no f special or new food enrichment items. But, you know, again, we've got the tug rope. Again, I'm pretty sure that's new. Um, again, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's now with some other animals as well, but I would like to see, as I've said countless times, and I should stop repeating myself, unique enrichment items for each animal, at least one. Uh, fun fact number one, doles are a keystone species, which means they are extremely important for maintaining the ecosystem in their habitat. Um, not much to elaborate on there. I do like that it's been included here. Um, I'm actually surprised it's not included here, um, about how like their endangerment has kind of created this cascade effect. But, uh, but yes, Keystone species are very uh, important. You could call them keystones. Uh, fun fact number two. Dholes do not bark or howl like other dog species, but are very vocal and often whistle to communicate. Really? Ah. Uh, ah. Huh. Okay. That That is a fun fact. All right. Um, I had like a hundred thoughts running through my head there. Just kind of stopped me in my tracks. Fun fact number three. Dhole packs have been known to bring down prey ten times their size. Now, that's wild. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, fun fact number four, I believe, in fact, they are, well, no, they can live alongside elephants, I think, so that would be, uh, hopefully that's not what they are implying over here, but that's, that's impressive. Fun fact number four, dolls have different dentition to all other dog species. Oh, I assume that's, um, just working based off of root words and whatnot, I assume that's got something to do with how your teeth are, like, um, located or otherwise like uh us like distributed like how many molars versus canines versus things like that what what one or the other i've never come across this word before but i'm assuming it's got something to do with uh, with teeth right i'm assuming uh it is thought that this may help them eat faster to prevent their kills being stolen by competitors pretty interesting all right fun fact number five humans who live in jungles have been known to follow dolls to track prey because they are such effective hunters man like is that not so fat like okay look like <laughs> very similar to some of the uh the dingo stories that we were getting uh like the uh the the like indigenous dingo stories that we were talking about when we did uh when we did the dingoes at elitsu south i'm uh i just love oh, god i just i i find this whole aspect absolutely fascinating also just want to say my favorite set of fun facts uh, from this entire DLC. There have been more interesting individual fun facts with some of the other animals, but collectively this has been the most uh, most fun I've had going through the fun facts. Uh, very very good stuff. Very good stuff. Especially four is fast. Four is fascinating. Three is just like pretty epic. Two is interesting, like not something I would ever even think to look up or consider. Uh, one is like an essential, you know, like a warning almost, which is very in keeping with the, 
with the whole conservation aspect. Uh, and then five is just cool. <laughs> Again, I'll, I like these fun facts. Oh, you know what? I was mistaken. I guess they don't share spaces with the elephants. And I think I'm mixing that up with something else. However, are they able to? I believe they okay, they don't they don't share spaces with elephants uh, in game like they're not supposed to. But in the real world, their habitats do have overlap, if I'm not mistaken. So I do wonder if that's what's being implied over here by uh, ten times their size. But uh, we're not here to find that out. We're here to find out how these dolls interact with this space. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some more dolls. We've got Anya and Raga. Looks like we're going to get uh, Amrita and Ravina as well. Adopt you and adopt you. Um, Mahika and Aditi. You know what? I... Sure. Ch sure. I think we're fine. I, I don't know if the ratio... We should be fine, right? Go ahead and get uh, you guys all. Send to quarantine large. Let's go ahead and unpause. And they should be ready shortly. Hopefully soon enough and then we'll, we'll get them in there. Uh, hopefully we also don't have the bugs that we were kind of seeing last time with regards to the distribution of food and whatnot. I'm a little concerned about that. Not going to lie. Low welfare. We do have some welfare issues. Stress. What are you guys stressed out for? What's, uh, what's worried about? All these people over here? Didn't used to be stressed out. Hopefully this will improve. Hmm. Keep an eye out for it. Catalina over here. Let's call the vet for you. A lot of these gray seals are, are stressed out. Weird. I don't recall that from last time, but this is, like, extremely low. Animal is distressed and trying to hide. Huh. Let's just, like, delete all this and get, get rid of all these people. We should be able to pull further back and, like, tuck in over there, but that's not what they're doing. They're going towards the water. Maybe they're trying to get, like, further up over here. Oh, man. I know I'm looking at the wrong animals, but <laughs> they're just they're, they're fun to look at. We will keep an eye on our gray seals a little bit. I'm a little concerned about that. Like, this is going to call, call in protesters and stuff. And again, it's a sandbox zoo, so it, quote-unquote, doesn't matter. But, you know, it does matter. I, I would rather not have to deal with that kind of stuff. I'd rather not have to see that kind of stuff. And rather the animals don't have to uh, suffer in that way. And I'm really quite happy with the... Uh, with our spaces over here. Waterfall from last time. A lot more of a uh, straight waterfall, this one. Like, just kind of straight up and down. We have a little bit of a uh, bifurcation over here, I suppose. But overall, it's pretty just up and down. This one over here is a bit more... Slightly more windy. It's got a bit of a, a bit of a curve to it, you know? Changing it up, switching it up, making it feel a little different. Now, this thing was bothering me earlier. Why don't we go ahead and just... You too, buddy. Let's go just a little bit. And nudge you down. There we go. Cool. Again, I just wanted something to like break up the um, break up the 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 gray, like the long expanses of gray, right? Down over here, we've we've seen some baby bears having a good time over here, buddy. God, oh, they're so cute. We've seen baby bears, we've seen baby uh, bintu rongs and baby babirusas. <laughs> Mouthful to say. Uh, so I'm I'm happy at least we've been keeping up with the. With baby arrivals, as it were. Whoa. Bit of a jumper here. Um, but, uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll get some baby dolls. Hopefully they'll, uh, they'll dole out the babies today. Alright. They'll be, they'll all be done soon. We'll move them in at the same time. And, and again, I was just doing some preparation over here for the, uh, for the next animals. Which I think I will do together. Some of you did ask to see the, uh, um, oh, the name, the guess it. I think it was the proboscis monkey, right? Yes, okay. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's proboscis monkey. Uh, the proboscis monkey and the um, Malayan tapir will probably do together um, in, in a space over here. Some of you were, were requesting to maybe see that. Got to come up with some ideas. I have some in mind, but I'll do a little bit more research and we'll get something going there hopefully sooner rather than later. We got a lot of people coming down this way. Eh? I mean, it's a pretty worthwhile experience, I suppose. Not every zoo allows for that kind of opportunity. You guys are all done? No. Injured, infected, wow, okay, I was not expecting that, especially in sandbox mode. I would not expect to see uh, diseases and, and stuff like that. Alright, go ahead and move you over to Habitat 14. And these two, Ravina and Raghav over here, will get uh, a little bit of work done, hopefully patched up in no time, and then we can... Uh, Bring them in, especially Raghav over here. He's like our only male. So we're not going to have babies if we don't have a male and a female. So, you know, that's going to be 
hopefully soon. And I do want to see if they're able to access the space properly. Again, I, I'm hoping that, yeah, they're able to come up over here, take a nap. I'm hoping there's enough hard shelter. Like, I might need to adjust some of this to make it a bit more contiguous. Um, so that actually counts a bit more. But basically, my thinking is, like, they have part of this bedding where they can stay covered up. And they have part of this bedding where they can kind of, like, bask in the sun. You know, they can go up over here for their morning stretch. Their, uh, their downward hole or what have you. And uh, that would make for a rather nice, I think, site. Like, if, if you catch it up over there, if you're here when that happens, I think that'd be pretty cool, right? Uh, pretty pretty happy with the space overall. Um, it's just so different from everything else. It sticks out. It uh, uh, I like experimenting with, like, again, last time, you know, we went super deep down. This time we're going, you know, comparatively, relatively super high up. In fact, I feel like this is equal to, like, this increase in height is equal to this drop in height. On the topic of drops, though, we have our first hole being dropped off. Hey, buddy. Okay, now these proportions look a lot more like I'd expect them to. Alright, let's take a look at their habitat over here really quickly. I want to make sure they're able to reach everything and do everything. Ah, uh, see, I was a little worried about this. A little worried about this. I had this a couple times. We'll be fine. Just a couple of adjustments needed here. There we go. Beautiful. They are able to get up there. They're able to get up there. They're able to tuck in. Beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Very pleased. And they are not able to escape. All right. Pretty happy with that. Good stuff. Uh, how is the terrain? Uh, not enough space. Not enough space, eh? Um, all right. I, they don't need this much water, so I could reduce the water. Go ahead and pause for a second here. Gonna make this guy box up, but that's okay. Go ahead and... Pull this up a little bit, edge here, push this down a touch over here so it stays blocked off, pull you up as well, there we go, again they don't need too much more land, just a little bit more land, down to there maybe, hmm, oh. up to here, go ahead and, what are we looking at now? So close. Literally, it's like a matter of a little bit more, a little bit more. Poor rubber ducky. Pull you up over here. I <laughs> love that the physics actually applies. Do that, sure. How about? That's like no difference. This doesn't go high enough. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm more entertained by the duck than I should be. Seeing it's like buoyancy and stuff in action. There we go. Happy I was able to eyeball the uh, the difference needed there. Where is my... There it is. Oh, hold on a second. There we go. Right for place in the water. Yeah, that works for me. Wish you couldn't see these. I wish you could do something to like hide them. And like display them, you know, like a short cookie or something. Doesn't look as good when it's down there. Better when it's up there, but you know, now I can see a black spot over there. I don't, not, not the biggest fan. Anyway, that is neither here nor there. So they're happy with their space. Are they happy with their coverage? Yeah, plants are good. Oh, now they're unhappy with their space again. Why did that happen? That's weird. All right, well, and not the end of the world, just a bit more. I don't mind these adjustments, it's fine. I would have liked a bigger body of water over here, but this is fine. I have a little bit of a train thing going on. What about if we just, like, raise this a bit? Like that kind of a thing. There we go. Yeah, we should be fine. All right, cool. Uh, oh, you know what's happening? More being delivered. No, that's not what happened there. That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> wonder if I... Pull you back instead, because there's only so much water reduction I want to do. Get in there, get in there. Pull you back a little bit. Got to make sure they can't escape over here, though. What are we looking at? I think we're, like, close enough. It's not, it's barely changing. I want to have to change this whole path and everything. The other option is, of course, we could do... Well, they can't reach this, so it's not like this will count. Huh. 
Pull you back a little bit, maybe. Not gonna buy us enough room. I think I'll have to just kind of like be okay with uh, with a little less land than initially desired. That's too bad. Let's also adjust the terrain though. Like they don't necessarily like the ground that they're in. Let's at least fix that. Being a little off here is fine. Being a lot off anywhere is less acceptable. Too much rock. Fair enough. Let's go ahead and get some soil out over here. There we go. Two birds, one stone. A little bit of sand, they don't mind, so that's good. Let's go ahead and actually reduce the size here and solidify this since they are okay with um, with soil. I wanted this to kind of have... I, I assumed while I was doing the time lapse that they have like this human relationship and whatnot. Uh, so I wanted to have like a bit of a path so it felt like it was walked on and it had like a bit of a, you know, paths in... Um, paths in... Uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Villages and stuff, kind of a vibe to it. Get this down over here, and uh, yeah, it seems like that uh, that is a that is a relevant thing to do. Short grass, they would like more of. Good. I don't like long grass myself, but they do want some long grass. Let's not get rid of too much of it, right? In fact, let's go ahead and put down some long grass down over here, and then some short grass up over here. Do you hear that little yelp? I think he's playing with some bubbles. I'd like to get this terrain stuff. I'm not gonna mess around with their uh, living space all that much like too much more because you want to spend some time with the animals as well <laughs> and uh part of the point i guess more short grass needed cool and they have a little bit of snow in the environment but i don't think it's enough to actually upset them not by too much what we could do is we could pull it back a little bit but again i don't want to spend you know, a huge chunk of this uh, episode looking at um, looking at their uh, like small things like that. If they were like super upset to the point that they weren't going to have any babies, that's a that's a different matter altogether. This is more of a showcase kind of a situation. We need another bit of food enrichment. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Then I think we'll be good. Uh, habitat, the hole. Looking at food enrichment. Go ahead and get you a dog ball. Yeah, let's get that up over there. It'll roll down there, I assume, but hopefully it'll stay inside the enclosure. All right. Spent some time with these animals. Waited long enough. They, they do have... I mean, again, you know what? No, I'm going to stick with my original statement. Their proportions are kind of funny. Their heads are smaller than I would expect. Their ears are about the size of their head. I feel like I'm looking at a rabbit. <laughs> um, the neck is really quite beefy, uh, of course. There you have it, folks. Now this series is officially a party elite uh, planet zoo series. And uh, I was surprised we didn't get a nice zoomed in shot of that happening before, but here we are. Uh, we've got some fighting going on over here. Let's go ahead and get rid of some of these males over here. Get you two. At least the one. Let's go. That'll hopefully solve that problem. As, uh, as this uh, as sandbox zoo gets bigger and bigger, it gets a bit more cumbersome, of course. Um, but yeah, like their, their proportions are, are kind of funny. Really beefy, beefy neck. Really beefy, um, you know, legs across the board. But long body. That body is long. So long, in fact. And the neck is so beefy that uh, the head looks tiny. Oh, but look at that. So cute. If that's not a call and response to being called so cute. Yes, play, play. Now, they're yipping for sure. Like, I, wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call those barks, but they sound barkish. They're, they're, that was a bark, right? Did they just give them barks? Are they not uh, whistling? I was really looking forward to that. Oh my, oh my God. Is that the, uh. Is that the tooth thing you were talking about? Helping them uh, work with food faster? No, it's, it's not, obviously. Hey, buddy. Look at that. I could take a nap here. I could just, I could take a nap here. Next to a waterfall like that. Basking in the sun.
I'm really quite pleased with this space, actually. Especially because, like, the mountain was such a kind of scary thing to dive into. I wasn't sure how it was going to work out. I wasn't sure if it was going to work out. Um, but no, this is great. They're interacting with the space. They're actually going up there right now. Uh, it looks pretty good. I like how the rocks kind of, like, break through the snow as well to make it feel like, you know, peaks actually breaking through snow coverage and whatnot and uneven snow coverage and that kind of stuff. We've got the trees. Obviously, the scale doesn't make sense, but that's to be, I mean, that's to be expected. That's a given. But, uh, yeah, overall, really quite pleased with uh, how they're using the space, how they're running around. They're swimming, they're enjoying the water, they're enjoying the land, they're enjoying these little, like, hidey holes up over here. Yeah, look at that. This is huge. This cave is huge. I always, I always get the scale off in my head when I'm doing a time lapse. I was like, yeah, you know, maybe it's a little tight down here. But then the animal actually gets in here, you're like, oh no, there's, like, room for an entire pack just in the shade over here. And another entire pack in the sun over here. <laughs> They got plenty of room. Oh, I'll take a little nap. I really want to see a whole get up over there. I've got the blood scent marker up over there and everything in the hopes that they will actually get drawn out there. Because uh, that would be... Oh, man. I would just... Something like this with the toll. I, oh, I'd be so happy. I'd be so pleased. I really wish there was, like... A photographic element to, to these games. Like, for the guests. Um, not just for... Uh, not just for us, like, you know, getting to an angle and, and taking a screenshot or what have you, but, like, for the guests as well, setting up a, a photo op kind of a thing. I've been told that uh, Planet Coaster did that, so it's a bit of a surprise that it's not been carried over to uh, Planet uh, Zoo, but, hey, you know, maybe eventually. They brought billboards, so hopefully eventually they'll bring uh, some of the other stuff as well. Because that would definitely drive a lot of my design decisions. Look at that, these two guys just napping down over here. You guys napping up over here. Everyone's just napping. Everyone's just napping. All right, fair enough. Raghav, have you been taken care of? Um, market no zoo. Take a look at the the hole. Raghav is in quarantine. Do we not have? Like, yeah, what's going on, though? Why are you not being... This has been a while now. Ray, do we not have... Uh, oh, you know what? Huh. I never, in, like, put down a... Uh, vet clinic. Vet clinic, vet surgery. It was kind of like, well... Really won't need it. It's sandbox mode. But here we are. Staff... Got a couple of vets in here. There we go. That'll do the trick. We might not be able to, uh, we might not see any whole babies today, but reason to tune in next time. <laughs> now, not, not many guests are coming up over here. I'm not too surprised. I'll be honest. It is a long walk. It is a very long walk to go from here all the way around, all the way down over here. We could always put in like a spawn point if we wanted to. Um... If we wanted to get a spawn point in here, we could definitely do that, but I don't, I don't see the need for that. I want to see if the uh, guests naturally make their way over when there are baby doll or when we have the other animal uh, over here as well, right? Uh, that'll make a nice difference, I think, drawing more people to this general area. Because we have some people coming over to here, and they kind of like check out the animal, and they turn around and leave is the vibe I'm getting. But slowly we're seeing more and more people get further and further along, I think. That is a drum. I was like, is that the bear? No, that's a drum. There's our bear. Bear witness to his majesty. What a cutie. Alright, quarantine passed. My bad on that. Quite funny, actually. The type of things I've become so used to with, um... With our franchise, like, Let's Play versus, uh... These, like, miniseries. Doesn't mean we can't spend time with these guys. Hey, buddy. They're so fun to watch.
I can literally quietly just watch these animals hang out. Look at that. Well, that's a good boy. Or a good girl, I guess. Enjoying the waterfall. Guys up over here. Having a good time. I think so. I think they're enjoying the space. Gazing at that waterfall. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh. That was great. L like, look directly at it. Running up now, probably for a nap. Just want somebody up there for that blood scent marker. Oh, oh, here we go. Dude, are you kidding me? Like... I'm very pleased that that happened. <laughs> I wish this was a more like zoomed in shot. I wish I had like a telephoto lens. I wish I could like adjust my lens over here. But that is... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy this exists. I'm very happy this exists. One of those things where it's just like, I wonder if it'll happen during the session. I wonder if we'll ever see it happen. And, uh, and then it happens and it's just like... You want to capture the moment as best as you can, right? Like, the moment I unpause, it'll be gone. It'll be over. It might never happen again. Not when the camera's looking, at least. But this is. I'm. I, I like this. I like this a lot. And then from like all the way out over here, there's just something about the size of it, the scale of it. Got them up top, you got them down low. You know what? I actually quite like this space a lot. When when I first finished it and I was like first looking at it, I was like, you know what, it's uh it's up there. I quite I quite like it. Uh I don't know if it's, you know, super special, but you know, it's it's nice, it's nice. And now as I'm seeing the animal interact with the space and just like the verticality of it and the different like zones and the different areas and it's all being used, now I'm a lot more I'm 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 more than pleased. I'm like, yeah, this is actually <laughs> They're pretty good. Again, I'm, I'm very, uh, very self-critical. I very rarely like my own, like, work. Uh, it's a problem. But, uh... And, and I know that. I'm very conscious of that as well. I know that that's a thing that I do. Uh, and every once in a while, you know, you get into a situation like this where I'm like, yeah, that's, this is fine. This is okay. And then, and then I see it in action. It's like, maybe it's better than okay. They're so fun. They just look like they're always playing. Yeah, they could be like standing around looking at each other and they just look like they're playing. Question is, will I get a baby? Frog of get to work, buddy. Who is your mate? Ah, no bond yet. No bond yet. Soon, hopefully. There are options. He's like thinking about it. He's watching them. He's like, ah. who among them is like, uh, like an episode of like the whole bachelor. No? Nobody? No, we're running it. We're, we're leaving. Come on. He's not going- he's going for the food. <laughs> Look at that, though. Must been- I, I can't even begin to fathom how you go about making these moments in, uh, as far as, like, the game is concerned, like, development-wise. Like, it's simple to- it's, like, simple to say. It's like, oh yeah, food arrives, trigger, uh, you know, the animal running to the spot. But, like, that- just the- the synchronicity with which they arrived, and they all got into their positions, and we have one that's back over there, obviously not hungry. Oh. God, I saw the tail end of that. <laughs> Buddy's arriving a little late. He's like, guys. I was out for a swim, stop walking all over my food. Having a little lie down over here. There's just so much. This is the one with the funny teeth. <laughs> Excellent thumbnail, except for the funny teeth. There, I was just gonna say, give me a yawn or something. Beautiful. Things work out sometimes. <laughs> Things work out sometimes. Okay. Where is... Oh my... Let me just... There we go. That is... That is Anya. Ravina. I wonder if I'll be able to identify the males eventually based on like their size and stuff alone. Amrita. 
Aditi, Mahika, Ravina. Where where's our male? I haven't we also haven't seen them play with the um little tug toy or whatever it's called. Still no bond, eh? We might not see one today, but that's not the end of the world again, like we did with the uh what was it, the uh was it the bin too wrong, I guess, that we had to come back to? Oh, there we go. We got guests coming through now as well. Great, finally. Make the long journey. Receive a wondrous reward. These guys are all coming through. I'm also actually quite happy that I was able to pull this ramp off. I've been trying to get this kind of stuff done for literally years now. Finally had the patience and the wherewithal to, to make this work, to actually make this path slope up rather than have... Uh, it's not perfect, you know, I would I would like to smooth this area out as well, but again, this isn't franchise mode. That's not the focus of, of this uh, mini-series. A bit more reasonable about that. Hang on, are you not happy about your social situation? Why is that? Space, ah, okay. Oh, huh. I think, I think we do need to maybe make this a little bit larger. It's not the end of the world. We just have to like make this curve a bit bigger and then pull some of these out. Not a very difficult thing to do at all. I feel like that would be the uh, way to go about doing it. But maybe we leave that for like next time or something because I do think this is probably what we're going to go ahead and call it a session. Um, I don't think we're going to see a bond today. If I thought we were close to seeing pups, then I would definitely uh, extend our session a little bit longer. But I don't think we are, unfortunately. Um... Hopefully we'll see a bond get made early on next episode. And then as we uh, as we look at the uh, new animals from next episode, hopefully we'll see some babies come out and we will uh, be able to hang out with them. But for now, folks, I do think this we're going to call it a session. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you enjoyed hopefully learning something new or at least uh, watching the space get built and watching the animals play. Uh, as always, I'm open to feedback, suggestions, thoughts, opinions. So if you have any, feel free to share them down below. If you are enjoying, leave a like down below as well. It does make a very big difference for the channel. It lets me know what folks are interested in. It lets me know what I should and shouldn't do on the channel. And also lets YouTube know if folks are interested as well. So it really helps the channel a lot. Uh, on the topic of things that help the channel, as we zoom out over here, I want to mention, of course, and as always, yeah. a massive thanks to all of the channel members and patrons who have been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Again, y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you as well, of course, for watching. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.